Hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love guys. Now today's first story comes from the Am I the Arsehole here subreddit from Chocolate Forward 2858 and says, Am I the Arsehole here for suspecting my wife of doing something awful at a friend's bachelorette week in Mexico? She spent virtually zero money and took no pictures. I'm in the middle of probably the biggest crisis of my adult life and I can barely think, so I apologize in advance if this comes across as really weird or rambly. My wife went to Mexico last week for a friend's bachelorette party. And aside for the plane ticket, the hotel and the first day's food and drinks, she didn't spend a penny all week. I mean, on the credit card, it's clear as day that on Monday up until about 9 p.m., she was buying dinner, stuff at the hotel shop, drinks at the bar, souvenirs, and then at 9 p.m. she didn't spend another cent the entire week until she was at a layover airport in Dallas. She says it's because her friend took over and paid for everything. I guess this is plausible, but it is giving me a funny feeling. What is worse is that my wife is a person who posts her entire life on Instagram or TikTok, mostly Instagram, but if she does anything from get a latte to picking the kids up at school, she'll post it either as a picture or as a story. The last thing she posted on TikTok was that trend of people jumping in into their vacation from the airport. And after that, her social media is blank. I was kind of keeping an eye on it because I was excited for her to go on the trip. And again, I guess it's plausible, but it gives me a funny feeling. When she got home, I said, I can't wait to see all the pics she took. And she really blew me off and said she just didn't feel like taking pics that week. She's also been incredibly distant and last night she said she felt like sleeping on the couch because the AC hits better. This is 100% true, but I swear I heard her talking on the phone in the middle of the night. When I got up to check on her, I accidentally tripped over the dog and made a huge racket so when I got downstairs she appeared to be asleep. I brought all of this up this morning and said I'm not accusing her of anything, but all this put together is making me feel uneasy. I wasn't trying to bait her or fight with her, just get my feelings on the table. She said you're a major fucking asshole for bringing this up on her first day back at work. I said I wasn't trying to pry, just communicating with her and she said your communication is prying and I'm not discussing this with you ever again. She then took the kids to summer camp and left. Am I the asshole here? Now, all of this gave me bad vibes, but her reply to you at the very end, I'm not discussing this with you ever again, basically telling you that you can't bring up this, this holiday again, is really sus to me. And look, you know your wife more than anyone. You said about her social media habits and how she's always on there, post everything on there, and suddenly it went dead at a certain time and never posted again. And she never spent a single cent after that either, saying her friend took it over and paid for everything. Maybe you could ask the friend, did she actually pay for everything? But there's definitely something suspect going on. Which King says, not the arsehole. There's a lot of missing information here. But the fact that she won't discuss her vacation with you and even considers it prying when you ask about it is very strange. Sleeping on the couch is kind of the nail in the coffin for me. Mateo says this right here. If for whatever reason I didn't go on vacation with my other, I'm definitely in contact the whole time and would be super happy to talk about everything when I got back. What I saw, who I met, experiences and everything. I see a lot of red flags as well. Miss Assassin Lady says, I went to Disneyland for the first time two years ago with my friend. I was constantly texting my husband and sending him pictures. When I rarely take pictures and post especially of myself. When I got home, I told him all about the trip and everything we did. There is something definitely suspicious about OP's wife. Chemical Ad says, it's wild that when you told her it was a little suspicious, she made it even more suspicious with her reaction. You already know, don't you? Old Willingness says, check her friend's social media. I'm sure you'll find stuff and look at their text messages. Oopy says, damn it, I should have included that. Her friend posted on social media up until about the third day, but there were no pics or tags of my wife. And then that friend deleted everything from a couple of days leading up to the trip. The bride to be rarely posts, so it's not surprising that she doesn't have much. Another commenter replies to that saying, that's really, really odd. Something happened on that trip. It may not even be cut and dry cheating, but something really weird had to have happened. So then OP starts adding some edits. They said, so 
I realized that her text probably synced to her iPad, so I just checked. It took me a while to figure out the passcode, but I did. There was an iMessage at 9.15. The night she got to the resort from a number with no contact info that said, Okay, I'll meet you in the lobby. Is the app you said Signal? I looked up Signal and it's kind of like WhatsApp. The iPad doesn't have Signal on it. Edit 2. If you've been following my comments, you've seen that my sister is coming over and she's an insane internet sleuth and is relentless when it comes to this cheating stuff. She also scares me a bit, so I'm hoping this isn't a mistake. I'm going to probably stop responding for a while so we can talk and she can do her thing. I'm numb, but she can do this. Thanks everyone and the nice comments and the reality check. It's not looking good. Edit 3. She cheated. My sister was able to get lots of info from the real estate guy in, and my wife denied it at first, but then admitted it. Sorry it took so long to update, but I'm numb. I have literally zero idea what to do now. Armageddon says... She should do this professionally, private investigator basically. Hoopy says I love my sister to death and obviously her skills and tenacity were invaluable here, but I don't think the world is ready for how vicious she can be. Another commenter says, so what did Sis find out in the past 24 hours? We haven't really given any kind of update. Hoopy says, my sister had a burner phone and texted him as my wife. That her husband, me, was suspicious, so she had a new phone and for him to contact her on signal there if he wanted to stay in touch. Literally within seconds, he sent a signal message that through the course of an hour or so, my sister, again pretending to be my wife, was able to get him to reminisce about the week they had. He sent pictures of them together in the bar, them on the beach together, etc. We took pics of the signal messages with another phone, so there is 100% smoking gun evidence of her with the guy and him saying how much fun they had. Mr. Bill replies that and saying really gross that a couple dinners and drinks was all it took. Sorry, brother. Opie says, what I can't get over is how sleazy the guy is. He's not attractive. He's overweight. His real estate website reads like some get rich scheme. He literally looks like Tony Soprano with 30 extra pounds and greasier hair. I'm ripping myself up because I just don't get it. I probably make more than he does. Combined, we certainly do. So what did he have that was worth it? Is it that I spent our money on maxing out our retirement accounts and college savings and not flashy BS like he obviously does? I mean, I could understand if she was attracted to a hippie or rock climber or surfer dude with rock hard abs, but, but this makes it so much worse. I feel like such a failure. Initial training says, I'd also be curious to know how your sister found out. Did she pretend to be your wife on a call or text? I was sure you were going to have trouble figuring it out, so good for you and your sister. OP responded saying, I'm sorry, I've had well over a thousand questions asking for clarification. If you're asking how we found out who the guy was, it went like this. I logged into my wife's iPad and there was a single iMessage from an unknown number where my wife said she would meet him in the lobby and ask him what the Signal app was. I googled that number and it's a real estate agent's number who works in South Florida. I found his Instagram and was able to verify that he was in fact in Mexico this past week, supposedly on a golf trip with his friends. OP updated a few hours later and says, edit 4, for people looking up our personal stuff, we don't live in Lubbock, nor does my wife work for the Lubbock school system. We grew up in the area and went to college, but have long since moved to another community. Please don't try to research this as you may hurt someone who is totally not involved. I'm getting lots of advice to delete this and I don't want to, but I may have to. Edit 5, I know people really want updates and we've been talking, arguing, screaming, threatening all day long. I'm more confused than I was this morning, that's for sure. But I'm also confused, exhausted, sad, upset, nervous, and I don't know what to do. I did make a preliminary appointment with family, the family law attorney tomorrow to talk about protecting assets and how to navigate the legal way ahead, regardless of what I choose to do. I will say as a subreddit that this was cross-posted to and it may be the most toxic group of people I've ever seen online. And I feel really bad for those people. As for the privacy issues, no one has figured out who we are. That's not a challenge, by the way. I'm very tired and I doubt people are invested, but if there's still an interest, I can update either on this post or a new one in a few days. I'm really hoping to sleep tonight. My sister still has the kids and they're having a blast and I went to the lake with her boyfriend's family today. So I'm glad they're in good hands. There was a couple more questions to OP. No range says, I'm sorry, OP. Definitely not the arsehole. I know you have a lot to sort through right now, emotionally and logistically, but there's a lot of people in your corner. Also, there is no excuse for cheating. Do not let her justify, manipulate, gaslight, 
you into believing anything else. Get your divorce and some therapy. Everything will get worse, but it will get better too. Good luck. Opie says in one of the more lucid moments today, I was begging her to tell me why she chose a guy who weighs 300 pounds with greasy hair on his fourth marriage with at least six kids. And she flat out told me he made her feel special. I guess I don't know women at all, but I spent my entire life trying not to be that guy and have my wife set up for retirement, my kids set up for college. We have a nice second home on the lake. I took risks to move to engineering to management in my company so I could provide our family with everything. I work late hours, I love my kids and coach little league and volleyball and swimming even though I can barely doggy paddle. I love her parents and paid for them to go to Hawaii with us last year. And fucking fat Tony Soprano with his rented Ferrari and his awful Florida real estate site made her feel special and I'm looking at the prospect of legitimately not seeing my kids on Christmas morning ever again. Another commenter said to OP, does your wife even care that she just ruined her entire family? OP says in one minute she's devastated and begging me not to do anything rash and asking me to think of what the kids will do being raised in a split household. And then the next, she's utterly unapologetic and telling me I caused all of this. I'm all over the place emotionally too, so I get it. It's a little hard to hear that I caused this. Another commenter says, you know, after reading your comments, isn't it imperative that you inform the sleazeball's wife that she has a husband who cheats? I'd run that idea past your sister and see what she thinks. Opie says it will definitely happen, but I need to talk to the lawyer tomorrow first. I think if I hadn't asked my sister to babysit yesterday and today, this would now be a viral cheetah story all over TikTok with the pics to prove it. Another commenter says, I hope that there was no graphic photos that would make her famous in South Florida. At least I hope that you didn't have to see any. OP says, no, nothing graphic, just like selfies taken at the bar with arms around each other, them sitting on the beach in lounge chairs sort of snuggled up. There's a few pics where he paid for her to do parasailing and riding ATVs. There's enough where she can't deny she was spending time with him, but nothing graphic enough that would make me want to blow my brains out. Now, firstly, I just want to say, OP, if you do hear this, I'm fucking sorry you're having to go through that. Like one of the commenters said, not just the emotional, but all the logistical stuff that she's having that she's putting you through now, like all the divorce proceedings, the lawyer type stuff. You know, it's a lot to do, especially when this has just happened to you thinking about your children as well while she's trying to emotionally manipulate you at the same time you know throwing the kids in your face broken home all this kind of stuff i can't imagine what it would be like to have someone that you truly trust your wife someone that you trust wanted to have a good time while there was away and they're away doing this man that is messed up i'm sorry and i'm glad one of the commenters pointed out as well that perhaps he does have a wife and you know, is that wife going to find out? Because she knows, and your sister might be the best person for that. But this also had me thinking about the friends. You know, this was a bachelorette week and your wife just disappears. And they're also deleting posts on Facebook, etc., etc. Are they just covering for her? Were they up to no good at the same time? Lots of questions on that front as well. Which for myself, and you know, I'm not suggesting you do this OP because I think you need to protect yourself at the moment. You need to look after your own mental health. But like in my mind, and it's easy for me to say reading the story, I'd want to hear what they got to say as well. But again, I know that's very easy for me to say because I'm just sat here reading a very small part of your life. I'm not having to deal with the thoughts, feelings and logistics that you're having to deal with right now. I can imagine that you just want to like get away from it all, which I wouldn't blame you one bit. But now... I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. Now, our next story comes from new technology from the True Off My Chest subreddit. and says, my daughter-in-law is proposing to my son and I couldn't be happier. You know, when you read a title, you're like, what's the catch? <laughs> it's just a sign that I've read one too many stories, right? My daughter-in-law... A pediatrician named Lexi called me today with the most wonderful news. She intends to propose to my son. Lexi is such a sweet, hardworking, thoughtful, no-nonsense woman, and my son always remarks on how loved and respected he feels by her. I've never seen him happier. It warms my heart to see him so serious with someone after all these years. She is truly the daughter I have always dreamed of. I raised my son as a single mother for 29 years, and had to be both mum and dad to him. His father walked out after his birth. 
Seeing him so deeply in love and respected by someone as amazing as Lexi fills me with pride and joy. I get to be girly with her and share my love of jewelry, which I plan to leave entirely to her. The entire family adores her and they're all excited to meet her. I already call her my daughter-in-law and consider her a part of the family. Little does she know that my son has already brought her a ring and plans to propose during her birthday vacation in September. I'm so happy for them. I cannot wait to see their futures develop as spouses and eventually as parents when the time comes. My heart is overflowing with happiness and excitement for their journey ahead. And we do have an update to this story as well, but holy moly, I can feel, I can feel the happiness from Opie in that one post and it's got me absolutely beaming for him. I just hope it's not going to be one of those updates where it's like, psych, <laughs> and something shit happens. Really, I, I hope not. Backwards Diva says, we are now all shipping them and cannot wait for updates. Please try and find out the information of when she is doing it and tell him to make sure her ring is there too. She's putting in that work. She should show off her bling bling from him too. OP says she actually told me how she is proposing. It's also during the birthday vacation. She said she is creating a two chapter book with custom art of all their firsts in chapter one and the proposal and ring in chapter two. She's very creative. Kinky as hell says, are you kidding me? This is so adorable, I'm tearing up. Amazing, a race to the proposal. Please, please update when they announce and tell us how it goes down. Opie says she is really, really creative and thoughtful. My son said her first Christmas gift to him was a remastered version of his favorite video game song. She hired a composer friend of hers to do it. So nine days later, the update did come in. He said, my son Sean recently reached out to me with a request. He asked if I could take Lexi ring shopping with me since I'm in the process of designing a new ring for myself. He thought it would be the perfect opportunity for Lexi to see different styles and find her ideal ring. Sean shared with me that Lexi prefers something simple and not overly flashy. She told him anything bigger than two carats is for ego. I would just like a simple solitaire under two carats with no fancy band and a meaningful engraving. While Sean, being a successful environmental attorney, wanted to splurge on something beautiful and expensive for Lexi, her preferences are clear. A little backstory. When they were dating and Sean was struggling to land a big law job, Lexi supported him without a complaint. She always told him, if I was in my residency and you had your big job, you'd do the same. You have to be patient. It will come and one day we will laugh about it at our wedding. Lexi does enjoy expensive things, but she firmly believes that her fancy habits and tastes are hers to finance, never putting that burden on Sean. I'm taking Lexi to my jeweler this Friday. I'm incredibly excited to see her pick out her ring. Edit. Sean originally purchased a three stone ring that was 3.5 carats. When he spoke to Lexi and she said under two, he needed my help. I bought that ring off of him to add to my collection slash to keep them for the future. Feral Coffee Addict replies that and says, you're the mother-in-law everyone dreams of being able to have and spend time with one day. Opie says, I love her so much. She's the daughter I always wanted. Oh, bloody stop it, OP. Onion ninjas again. Stinstin says, beautiful. My fiance covered all of our expenses while I set up my consulting business. 20 years later, I returned the favor when my hubby had a heart attack and needed a solid year to recover. We celebrated our 21st wedding anniversary on May 30th. Our vows were more than words we said to each other on May 30th, 2003, that the foundation that our marriage was built on. I wish the same for your son and future daughter-in-law. Life happens, but as long as you have your partner's back, you as a team can get through anything. Opie says it seems that they're on that path. She's been nothing but gracious and kind to my son. And what an absolutely lovely story and still leaves us on a cliffhanger for that actual proposal. What a bunch of lovely people too, mother-in-law. You know, it's rare to see on these subreddits such a, a, a heartwarming story like that. Lexi sounds like a wonderful person. Son sounds great. Mother-in-law is great. And all I can really say is I wish you all the best for the future because, oh, you got me going, guys. You got me going. <laughs> now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. Oh, dearie me. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. 
and I'm going to see you in the next one. I need to go and dry my eyes. <laughs> Much love, guys.